Oh, here we go. I'm just goofing. New merch goofing. What is up, guys? I am so excited to be here today for this video. One of my favorite things to do with my friends is watch terrible movies. Not stuff like Justice League, but the so good it's bad movies like The Room, Troll 2, Miami Connection. Other ones I can't think of right now because I don't plan my videos enough. When I was starting out college, my friend Paul, my brother, and I would watch these bad movies and make fun of them while having a couple of beers. We had kind of a marathon for about a year where we found every single bad movie we could watch. And then the following years were kind of disappointing because we would hang out again and we would want one of those bad movies to watch and we couldn't find one. But when I went back home for Christmas break, we found a new one. It's called The Peanut Butter Solution and it's a kid's movie with ghosts and other things. I think giving any context would ruin the experience because I watched it without it. Really quick before that, I do wanna say I have new merch. It's all the Yikes meme stuff. We got like an embroidered one with hats. I haven't launched merch in like a year. So if you wanna support me, this is a fantastic way to do it. It's like kind of the best way to do it and you get something out of it. But you know what merch is cause you're watching YouTube videos. So I shouldn't explain that. Let's watch the movie. <laughs> That's my sister, Susan Allison Baskin, the wretch. <laughs> See the blue robe she's wearing? Looks too big, eh? Well, it's Mum's, and she's gone away. She's wearing it because she knows it really, really bugs me. I told her she said I could. Did she just respond to the voiceover? If we look back, He's not moving his mouth when the voiceover is happening. She just responds to that voiceover like he spoke to her and there's no reaction. So this isn't canon in the movie, but I'm making it canon. She can read minds and everyone's cool with it. So as long as we got that out of the way, right off the bat. But why? It's too big for you anyway. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do about it. And I can play. I don't want any of that guck. Just so you know, the mom didn't die. She's away on a trip. And while she's gone, her daughter's like, I'll just wear mom's clothes and be mom now. What? So Michael refuses to eat the breakfast she made because he doesn't want to accept that his sister is his new mom now. <laughs> and she storms away to go talk to their dad, who is an amazing character. I can't stand him, do you hear? I can't stand him. Everything I do is wrong. The food, the money, the dishes. Dad, are you listening to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you, Suze. I am just too tired for all your squabbling today. I have been up all night. Dude, your daughter is taking care of your son, and you don't have time to listen to her complain about it? As you'll find out, he's just painting upstairs. That's all he's doing. So Michael's friend arrives to, I guess, pick him up for school so they can walk together and also steal breakfast from the family. But he's also there to talk about how there was a fire at a home in the neighborhood. Fire last night, Dad. Yeah, it was fabulous. It all started about midnight. Half the neighborhood was there, but I got the closest. I suffocated from the smoke, coughing like this. <coughs> Boy, those flames. You should have seen them. So he definitely burned the house down. I know, you know, there should be a trial and everything. Innocent until proven guilty. But he's definitely guilty he burned that fucking house down. I know it. Old spooky house, Miss Cook. You know, the one that Wano's been sleeping in all winter. What's wrong with you? So when his friend mentions that it's the house that Winos were sneaking into all winter, Michael has like a weird horrible flashback to giving this homeless dude some money. And he says like, it's funny how little things can change your life. Funny how little things you do can change your whole life. This doesn't affect his life at all. The choice he makes later has literally nothing to do with him giving this homeless dude money. So I need you guys to prepare yourself for the character named the Senor. He is, um, how do I put this? A fucking maniac. Look at him. Look at the way he sits. Look at the muscles rippling under the skin. That's anatomy. Every great artist knows anatomy. I'm sorry, did you say muscles rippling under his skin? It's a dog, dude. Maybe a pit bull or something like that? Or a kangaroo? You know what you should have gotten? A kangaroo. Have you ever seen one of those fucking things? Put up, I'll put up a picture here. <laughs> you know what? They say there's still bodies. Silencio! Look at him! <laughs> <laughs> That's 
a pig. He's not a dog. Stop again. Okay, first, don't grab her like that, dude. Please do not do that. It's a pig. It is not a dog. Where do you see pig in this picture? Where did you get pig out of this? Almost a dog, or son. Almost. Okay, what? You looked at that last picture. Here's the dog, here's that last picture. Then he sees this piece of shit, and he's like caressing his hair, telling him how good this is. You gotta be blunt with this kid. That's a piece of shit. He needs to drop out of art class. Look at him. Don't use imagination. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, Jennifer. Oh, oh fantastic. Ah, uh, ah, I don't like it. I don't like it. Stop touching the kids, dude. Stop grabbing their shoulders. Give them critiques with your hands behind your head. So this movie is long. We're gonna have to move fast through a lot of parts. The rest of this scene, uh, he starts ripping up art, and then uh, Michael's friend says, If you do that, senor, I will never come to your class again. And I swear it. And that's not how being a student works. You can't just say, I won't come back to class again. And he rips up his art. So, um, that's that scene. Okay, Arthur, come on up. Arise, he said. And... Now here is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Just for a specific reason. This guy wants to sell the dad's paintings. And he goes to the attic to see what he has been working on. Bop, bop. Relaxing bird. <sighs> Well-dressed bird. Mm. Well-dressed bird? Show, show it to me again. The Oscar goes to Well Dressed Bird. <laughs> oh, I I'm so sorry. Uh, I've never had a reaction to art like that before. Um, if anyone could make their own Well Dressed Bird, so I can maybe make a print of it, that was wow. Let's see how much money he will get as an offer for Well Dressed Bird. <laughs> <laughs> What's amusing? <laughs> it's but empty. Amusing but empty? Amusing but empty? It's a well-dressed bird, asshole. Birds don't dress up, especially not in a good manner. Let me see, have you ever seen a fucking bird wearing a shirt? You've never seen so. you're not ready for well-dressed bird. He just doesn't get it, he doesn't, We'll move past it. Michael and his friend go to the burnt down house for some reason because Michael has this draw to it and I don't know why because he gave a homeless dude money and I guess that guy's dead so he has to see his body. Come on, Mike, please don't be so stupid. Look, I'm sorry to suggest it, okay? Then Michael sees something that makes him go full Marv from Home Alone <laughs> and it just fucking shoots him out of the building, down a slide. Mike! Speak to me! His friend brings him back to his family home because Michael's now unconscious from being scared so bad and also maybe electrocuted, I don't know. Dad? From the hospital, Doug can my cat's calls. Great, the kid could be dying for all they care. Am I dying? No, oh, you look pretty much alive to me, kiddo. Don't in front of your sick kid be like, he could be dying. Am I dying? No, no, <laughs> you fucking said it right in front of him, dude. So they put Michael to sleep and he comes down the next day like this. And strap in, cause this movie's gonna get way weirder. <laughs> Hi, Connie, do we have soccer today? You don't have any. But dad, he's- Shut up, Suze. It's the cat. It's that damn cat. I'm gonna wring its neck. No, dad, no, not the cat. 
It's the cat? What? What do you think the cat did? Fucking shaved his head overnight? Or you think that, what, he's allergic to the cat so he lost his hair? So you're gonna wring its neck? What the fuck, dude? What are you doing? Michael is not alarmed about being bald for like two straight minutes until he looks in the toaster and then is like, oh shit, three people telling me I'm bald is now true that I see it. I'm bald. So they go to the doctor and there's not much to say other than the doctor's explanation for his hair leaving. He says it's called- It's a proper medical term. It's harem scarum. Scarum. Here, let me show you what I mean. And here's his explanation. On this desk, your scalp. Okay? Now, on the hand, solid as a rock. Now, Michael, give me a good fright. Finger! <laughs> With the fingers. One moment, there they were, holding on, hanging onto the desk. Along came a fright on. Bam! They all away. So he's saying that your hair has a tight grip on your head, but if you get scared real bad, it just lets go and you go bald. I know you can lose hair from stress or anxiety, but not like boo and then you're Vin Diesel immediately. That is not a thing. Also, I don't see any other wacky sound effects in this movie, but when the doctor moves his fingers, makes a weird like bone noise, and I hate it a lot. In the next scene, the senor yanks Michael's friend into his office, which I guess is like a supply closet. And to paraphrase here, the senor is like, Michael's hair is fucking weird, where'd it go? And his friend just lies and says he doesn't know what he's talking about. So you don't know that there is something very funny about his problem? No, sir. What problem, sir? <laughs> but Michael's bald. <laughs> So that's a weird lie to tell. The principal then calls the senor into her office, and apparently he's been faking his identity the whole time? I found out that you've been thrown out of two schools, that you faked famous paintings, and that you've changed your name and appearance four times. And doesn't call the police because he's been working with children? She just fires him and is like, alright, go back to your house in this community. So that's... Um, dumb. That's a dumb thing to do. So then they decide to sneak attack Michael with a wig. Okay, just quick, slip it on, slip it on. No, I don't want a wig. Come on, Mike, it's for your own good. Quick, slip it on. Mike, listen to me. Listen to me for just a minute. Michael, no, hey, it's listen. fake. It's for your own good we're doing this, you silly kid. Do you want to stay in the house for the rest of your life? Hold still for one minute and let her slip it on. Just for a second. If you don't like it, we'll take it right off again. When they're about to show him the wig in the mirror, he looks like this. So I'm glad they adjusted the hair for the shot of him looking, because that would be horrifying. Michael is really worried that the wig is going to fall off his head, so they decide to glue it to him. And the only reason I mention that is because the next scene, when you see it, it would be alarming if you didn't know there was glue. So Michael's happy with his wig, and he goes back to playing soccer. But a bully, like, trips him. and then rips the wig off. And you know how kids are. When you see a bald kid, you immediately stop your soccer game and chase him through the neighborhood. Then the next scene is actually kind of unsettling. Michael hears a noise in his kitchen, and when he goes there, there's two homeless old people in the dark, just like going through the cabinets. Hi there, young baldy. Hi. Don't you remember me? Michael's like pretty unfazed, but they happen to be the ghosts from the house that burnt down. One of which he gave money to when they were on the street. In being really creepy old ghosts, they obviously, you guys know this movie trope, give him ingredients to grow his hair back. And it's like a bunch of mud and shit. One really ripe banana. Come on, say it! One really ripe banana. One really ripe banana. Put it on my head. You have to say put it on my head after each thing. You ain't very bright, are you? 
It's so bizarre because he has to like repeat what she's saying and then say, put it on my head. And it's like, weren't these just regular homeless people that died in a fire? Why do they have like ingredients to grow your hair back if you get scared? Why would that be one of your belongings? I carry, I just carry that around. I just have Rogaine ingredients in case I die in a fire and scare a child's hair off. It doesn't make sense. None of this makes any sense. Michael just gathers a bunch of gross shit and mixes it up in a jar, puts it on his head, and goes to sleep. Michael goes to the shower, he takes the stuff off, he looks in the mirror, oh no, still bald. But a couple of minutes later, something different happens. You've got little baby bristles. You sure it's not guck? No, it's hair. Michael's got hair! Alright! Mike! Alright, this is it, buddy! So if you're watching through this scene normally, you see every shot, and for a second you're like, Is Michael's hair getting longer? In each shot? And at first, my brother Paul and I were like, what a bad movie. The kid's hair is growing back and they had to do reshoots, and they didn't time them correctly. But no! This movie's not as bad as you thought, it's supposed to happen like that. It's the one thing that kind of makes sense in this movie. Oh wow, look at this. So here's where this movie genuinely starts to go off the fucking rails. Michael is in class and no joke, his hair is growing in math class, but his teacher is getting mad about it. But Mr. Jingris, it's moving. But it's alive, sir. It's not moving. It's just too long. It was short this morning, sir. Nonsense. What kind of a dodo do you take me for? It's not fucking growing. I've looked at it for two seconds. So as you just saw, Michael says it was short this morning and he was in class bald yesterday. And the math teacher is like, what do you think of some kind of fucking idiot? Michael, you were here in my class bald yesterday and now it's long. You expect me to believe that your hair grew fast? What are you trying to pull, Michael? The next day in class, Michael gives this speech about education for no reason. The scene doesn't matter at all. But now my hair won't stop. My only chance is for this guy to keep on cutting. Please let me stay. I want to be educated. A tip to Michael's friend, if hair is growing fast, don't cut it at the tips, cut it at the top. Why is he just like trimming it? Fucking shave your head every morning, Michael. I've had three teachers tell me today they'll resign if you go back in their classes. So finish your class and then you better go home. So the principal is just like, yeah, the teachers are threatening to resign because your hair is too long, Michael. So, leave school? <laughs> That's not how schools work with kids. They're not like, oh, this kid has a problem. So the teachers will quit if you don't stop coming here. And you, Connie, I think you've got a problem too. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Why, where's that hair coming from? Where's that hair coming from? This is a children's movie. Is it his knees? Is the hair coming from his knees? So then it shows his friend at night and I guess it's coming from his thighs. When did that happen? I don't know. And then we see how Michael has been sleeping with his hair. What? 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 How is that more comfortable than just laying down? Where are you going? To school. You can't go to school, Mike. They phoned. They don't want you there. Come back. No! Your hair is trailing on the ground! So when Michael's trying to walk to school, his dad's like, they just told you not to come back to school. And then like a lot of wind hits when Michael's trying to walk, and he like blows over and I guess passes out, and a mysterious figure it's the fucking senor, obviously. I guess kidnaps him, cause that's where we're at now. Uh, so Michael's gone and the sister and the friend go to look for him and they're in an art store and they see this. It's hair. Bristles, hairs, what's the difference? 
I know this hair. I've cut this hair. You don't? Are you certain? We're holding a bit of Michael in our hands. That's so weird for so many different reasons. But I asked him his name. He says, I don't have a name. So I says, what do I call you? He says, call me Senor. The Senor. Okay, here's the third and I believe final time I'm gonna say this movie's about to go off the rails again. They tail the Senor to a sweatshop where kids are making brushes out of Michael's hair. Why, you might ask? Why would someone do that? Because Michael's hair has magic paintbrush powers. The hair can paint magic paintings. That's real. That's a real fucking thing and I want you to know that. Also, the kids in the sweatshop are the kids from school. Everybody in the neighborhood is now in a sweatshop and nobody noticed. So one of the kids brings them to the magic paintings that are made with Michael's magic hair brushes. You know these paintings? They're so real, you can just walk right into them. So why not escape? It wouldn't work, because Jeremy tried it once, but he had to come back. Why? Because they're all imaginary places, you know? He never painted a real place like a, you know, sort of like a town or a road or a street or anything like that. <laughs> What the fuck? What a weird example for real places. He never paints a real place, you know, like a town or a road or a street. You can paint a town or a road or a street and they can be fictional. Why not say your school or like your house? And I know it feels like I'm moving fast through the ending of this movie because it sounds like the most exciting part. It's not. Michael's friend like rebels and it's really not that interesting at all. It's just like a weird, prison breakout thing. Children, I have been asked to demonstrate the art of magical painting, which is to do something that I never seen and with no photograph. Michael's friend wants the senior to demonstrate the magical paintings and he tricks him into painting the house that scared Michael. Like the senor knows that immediately. And what follows is the weirdest fucking scene I've ever seen in any movie. <laughs> It's this insane Willy Wonka fun painting scene as the kids cheer him on and he's enjoying it, but the kids are really tricking him. I thought he was the villain, but he's enjoying like this childhood joy of his art. So is he a villain after all? Yeah, he kidnapped a kid and is stealing his hair. Why did you think he would be a, a hero? So the senor gets scared from going in the painting and seeing exactly what Michael saw. The sister comes in, wakes up Michael, and he goes back in the painting to tell the homeless people he's not scared of them anymore. Anyway, you don't frighten me anymore, that's for sure. And they're kind of like, ho oh, ho, you passed the test. You're a brave boy. You'll go far. You were bald to make you not scared of ghosts. Was that the lesson? This whole time, the kids escape um, and Michael goes home and then his mom's there. I could go scene by scene for the ending, but it really just wraps up nicely and like, that's it. So, bye. Okay guys, my brother's staying over at my place so I have to do another ASMR Patreon thing. Here we go. Thank you, Crystal, Derek, Amigo, Business Vulture, Liz, Bernard, Josie, Sophia, Damien, Allie, Gabriella, Julia, Dom, Child of Burback, Kenzie, Casey, Lindsay, Aurora, Danny, Kimberly, Diana, Colleen, Adam, Cold Brewskies, Megan, Reese, Luke, Amanda, Kyle, Nichibon, Brian, Ashley, Jasmine, Slash Mazda, Dave and Janet, Matthew, thank you guys so much.